Hi, welcome, Martin W. Ball here into the Happiest, Happiness Aid Live community. So I have got the pleasure of presenting to you today around acceptance for your growth. And it's a very powerful topic, one that's actually impacted my life immensely, immensely over the years, um, and certainly more so over the last five in particular. So, and the reason for that is, is that if I was to take you back to around about September 2014, we would be sat now in the Marion Centre Mental Hospital with me just en enrolling myself in basically back into a course with them. And you would be sat looking at somebody who was completely lost, somebody who really didn't see the point in living anymore, didn't want to be here anymore, was feeling like no value, worth, no worth to anybody and somebody who just just was lost, just lost in life and through that process um, of going down that road really and listening to the opinions of other people then challenging my own opinion on what I felt or what I believed in myself led me to a dark, dark place. A place that I didn't, I had never been before, so it was unknown territory, as well as a place that was challenging me every single day, every single moment to, to survive. Now, the the thought around this is that when you're in that state, when you're in that place of feeling completely lost, detached, worthless, of no value to anybody else and no value to yourself, um, actually a pain in the backside, wasting people's time, wasting people's energy, then, then it's, it's a very hard hole to climb out of when you can't see anything else around you the the step ladders are there the there to actually climb out of everything that that i personally had experienced before that time i had everything that i needed to help me get out of here i actually don't know why but my battery is running out very very quickly all of a sudden so um hopefully beth help me <laughs> i'll put it out there beth will run in and uh and hopefully give me a charger. So, um, really dark place. And that, that's the thing is that we often forget in that moment, in that time when we're going through these, this, this, this time of pain is that we often forget about the tools, the skills that we've learned over the years. We forget around the things that we've got to help us move forward, to help us grow. And for for a lot of us, it's it's because we just can't see, the term is actually can't see wood for trees. Uh, and if you don't know what that means, just have a really good think around it. Can't see wood for trees. The wood's right in front of you. The wood is all there, but we just can't see it. It's the same as when we go into a supermarket or a shop, you know, and we, and we finally ask somebody after searching for God knows how long, where is it? And they're like, it's right in front of you because we just can't see it now um the challenge the challenge hey beth uh hey everyone that's jumped on just gonna let you know beth can you please please bring in the charger for me <laughs> i think i'm gonna die on my phone um so these these are the things to the for us to be thinking about is that often all these um the white things in the in the study um these things that it's constantly, the answers are constantly there. And what we tend to do is we tend to be in this state of the answers aren't there. I don't know what to do. I don't have the solution because we've allowed ourselves to get lost. And I'm speaking from somebody who was moments away, literally moments away from taking my life. So I'm not coming from a place right now plug that in there just um i apologize for this the the um the thing was working before and all of a sudden all of a sudden the battery giant 
actually um, some hearts right now, if you can hear this okay, just so I know the microphone's working perfectly fine. Give me some emojis just so I can continue rather than talking uh, and you're not being able to hear me. So if I don't see any hearts and emojis, then I'm gonna assume that you can't hear me. Uh, yep, okay, cool, Daniel Wayne, thank you very much, brother. So the, thanks, Caroline. So I'm speaking from a place of being at rock bottom. I'm speaking from a place of the unknown a place where a lot of people have no attachment to, they have no understanding to, they have no idea of where, of what that feels like, of what it's like to be there. They have no idea of what it's like for anybody else who's been there. Some people even come from the place of it's, um, it's selfish to even go that low. It's selfish to even think like that because of the people around them, family members, friends who love, love others and support others. But until you've been to that place, we really don't have an opinion. We don't have a comment. We have nothing of substance. There's a difference between having an opinion of substance and having, a, and a, and having a, a flippant opinion. And for many of us in society, it's built around flippant opinions. And, and I can tell you right now that from an angle of being so low, being rock bottom, that in that moment, I did not see any way of growing any way of growing as well. And bearing in mind the topic that I'm speaking about right now is acceptance for, for your growth. But I chose to, even though I was in a lot of pain and I was lost, I chose to be consciously aware of what was going in here externally. And what I mean by that is I actually went through all, g'day Julian, hey Caroline, um, I went through all of my social media, which was mainly Facebook. I unfriended, uh, unfollowed everybody, every single person. And then I went back through and started connecting with positive affirmation groups. Um, I started connect, um, unfollowing people who were positive in regards to their posts. So not just posting rubbish of that as a no value to other people um and i'll and i'll touch on that later on remind me about that but also from the angle of making sure what i was seeing whenever i went onto social media and bearing in mind i'm in a mental institute right now my mates back in england my family members are wondering what the hell's going on but i'm in a mental institute right now it doesn't get any lower from a point of disconnection from who you are when you're in a hospital that if I put a label on it is mental institute. So, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's actually nothing wrong with going and putting yourself in one if you need to go. It was one of the best things I ever did. So once again, I'm speaking from a place of experience and sharing this with you right now. And the whole focus was that the reason why I was detaching from those people who were doing those the posts that weren't empowering me was to make sure I was filling my own cup, making sure that the th messages that I needed to actually hear were the messages that were going to empower me to move forward. But I also was listening to a lot of personal development. I was listening to the likes of Oprah Winfrey, Les Brown, Jim Rowan, um, Tony Robbins, all these different people, Wayne Dyer. I was listening to all these people because the biggest thing around it was I was flooding my mind one of the things that I heard from Zig Ziglar was that if you were sat in your, in your living room and you sat there watching TV and I came into your living room with a bag full of garbage and I just dumped it on your living room floor, you would tell me to clean it up. You'd probably beat me up for doing so. But we're not aware of what's going in here on a daily basis that has far more of a significance than what the state of our carpet is or our floor. So what are we allowing to go into our mind? What garbage are we dumping into here? And I heard that and that was one of the most powerful messages that I ever got because in that moment, I started taking action. I started to make a decision that my life had to change. If things were going to get better for me, I had to become better. Therefore, I had to take a... Um, I had to evaluate everything that I was doing in my life, the people around me, what was going on, what actions was I taking that were resulting in the consequences that I was experiencing. Because there's no point in me pointing the finger at somebody else. 
and expecting them to change when it's me that needs to change. So this is, that, this is the power of this moment right here, well, certainly right here and then, or right then and in that moment. And even right here and right now, and for you listening to this right now, it might be resonating, it might not be, but at some point in your life it will do. You may be able to reflect on a point in your life where it will do, or it has done. And this is, this is where things started to shift. And this is why I said, and, I, and when, when you know, the amazing guys and the work that the Happiness Co. community do, the, when I was asked what topic it was going to be, it was acceptance for your growth. Because ex- ex- acceptance for your growth. And the reason for that is, is because I had to, in that moment, I had to accept I was who I was in that moment because of the decisions I had made, because of the, the actions that I had taken. And the only way things were going to get better was if I took better actions. So for me to take better actions, for me to experience better results, I then needed to change what I was doing. So that personal development going into me, those messages that I got from Oprah Winfrey, from Wayne Dyer, from Les Brown, from Tony Robbins, from Jim Rowan, from Zig Ziglar, all those kind of messages that were going and coming into my head were empowering me to become stronger, to think better, to make better decisions, even though I'm in a mental institute at this moment. Even though I'm still in there, I started to have conversations with myself in regards to what would life be like once I evolved through this stage? What was the impact that I was going to make? Would I be open to speaking about this experience to empower others, to give people a level of inspiration, which is in spirit, which is to connect with who we are? To accept that what we're going through right now is because there is something bigger going to be happening in the future should we choose to accept it and then act on it. This is why it's all around acceptance for your growth. Because growth happens when we accept exactly every single moment that's happening right now that has ever happened and that ever will happen. This is, this is, this is extremely deep and I'm saying this from a place of love, not from a place of dictating A mind that is closed is not going to hear this. A mind that is open is going to embrace this and be able then to start thinking clearer. So I ask you right now, which is it going to be for you? Are you going to live your life with a mind that's closed and say, well, it's all right for him. It's all right for her. They're not living my life. Or are you going to be the person who opens your mind and says, do you know what? If somebody else can get through that, then I can too. If somebody else can move forward and share their experience to empower others like I'm being empowered right now, can I do that? Am I willing to do that? Am I willing to put the work in to experience the growth to help other people become stronger? Because we all rise together. We all grow together. We all learn together. And the way that we actually learn is through our own experiences, but also the experiences of other people. The movies that we watch, the hero's journey, part of that, where we watch them and we hear these stories of people struggling. Ray Charles, the movie around Ray Charles, as a child, losing his brother, losing his eyesight. He didn't let that dictate the rest of his life. Les Brown um, shares his story of being um, one of two of twins and being adopted. And his life of of struggling through life where they had nothing, but they didn't know any different. But he's become one of the most powerful motivational speakers in the world. Extremely wealthy. The things that we experience that help us grow, they're also to help us connect. And one of the biggest gifts that we can give anybody else in the world is to share our experiences to help them. Because there might be a time when they need to leverage your experience to help them get out of that situation. There's a beautiful poem that's written all around walking down the same street. And we do this on a continuous basis. We walk down the same street. We fall into the same hole. We don't often know how we got into that hole. But we, we find a way out eventually. We walk down another street. I can't for the life of me think who wrote the poem right now. But we, we walk down another street. And we fall into the same hole again. But we knew it was there, but we still fall in because we've not learned the lesson. And this, this, this message for you right now is around the only way you will stop making the same mistakes or falling in the same holes is when you accept what is happening 
to help you move forward. You know, people often say, well, you know, I keep, I keep attracting the wrong kind, kind of guy. I keep attracting the wrong kind of woman. Now, that's because we're not learning the lessons from that relationship. What do we desire? What, are, are we clear on what we desire? Are we clear on, on, on the person who we are, the value we provide, and the value that we want to experience? The law of giving and receiving. And this is, this is one of the biggest parts and elements of that acceptance and of that growth. Because when I reflect on everything that's ever happened in my life, it's easy for me to be flippant and say, well, that just happened because of my parents. That just happened because of my family. That just happened because the boss who I worked for was a bit of a dick. But the truth of the matter is, is that isn't what it is because that's a judgment. It happened because it is supposed to happen to help me grow. And am I going to choose to accept that growth? And when I'm talking like this about myself and asking myself these questions, these questions are for you. These questions are for you to allow yourself to reflect on every single part of your life, but not from a place of disempowerment. Because disempowerment can only happen if you choose to allow it to happen. Empowerment can only happen if you choose to allow it to happen. So which are you going to choose? Are you going to see that every single thing that's happened to you has helped you become the person you are today? Has helped you be the strongest version of yourself right now in this moment, stronger than you could have ever imagined. Because listening to this right now, listening to this message, you are becoming stronger. Whatever questions I'm asking, whatever I'm encouraging you to do, based on what I've experienced and I know has worked for me, you have the option to go and do that, as well as you have the option not to go and do that. But if you don't go and do it, how are you going to grow? How are you going to become more? How are you going to experience more? How are you going to impact your own life? Maybe the lives of your family members, your children, your grandchildren, you're maybe becoming a better parent, a better father, a better, a better mother, a better auntie, a better uncle, a better son, a better daughter, a better godfather, a better godmother, a better person in everyday society. How is that going to change if you don't take action, if you don't implement what you're learning? And this isn't to say that, that I have all the answers. I have the answers to what I've experienced in the past. Because what's coming forward to me right now in the future, a lot of it's the unknown. Because there's no point me setting goals for things that I've already achieved in life. I want to be setting goals for things I haven't achieved, to have new experiences, to, be, to actually become better than I have ever been before. Because there's no point me talking about the same thing over and over again and living Groundhog Day over and over again. None of us came here to remain small. None of us came here to just sit in a corner and remain comfortable. Yeah, nothing bad's probably ever going to happen to you based on judgment of what could or couldn't happen. But at the end of the day, you get to the end of your life and you look back and you go, well, that wasn't much fun. It's the adventure it's what we experience. The conversations that we've had with friends, the falling out that we've had with friends, when we haven't spoke to friends, when we've, had, when we've fallen out with our best friend and we talk to somebody else and say, oh, well, she's just a bitch. You know, she said this. He did that. There's a lesson in it. And maybe that lesson is to not behave that way. Maybe that lesson is happening because you are behaving that way and choosing to talk about it in regards to what other people are doing. Maybe you're doing it as well. In any given moment, we are a student and we are a teacher. And this is why it's so important to listen, not just talk, why it's important to listen. Some of the best things that I've ever ever learn from is not just my experience it's actually listening to other people's experiences without judgment it's jumping on mastermind calls with people where i listen to their experiences their value their knowledge the time that they've spent to help themselves grow the books that they've read uh, that they've read 
the, the movies that they've watched, the programs that they've, they've done to invest in themselves, the video calls that they've been on, the lives like this that they've been on, and they're bringing that information to the table right now. For a lot of people, when I present, I often say, this might not be the message that you need to hear right now for you personally, but I guarantee you this. There's two things that will come from this. One is you will get the information that you need to pull out of your toolbox, which is in here, when you need to use that tool. But also you will have that tool to use for somebody else when the time comes when they need it. And your ability to walk around with a toolbox that's full of tools, different kinds of tools for different applications, is going to help you help other people with whatever challenges they've got. And that is when we start understanding the true power of acceptance. Acceptance for the growth. At no point since what I went through, and I was severely bullied, severely bullied in the mining industry, where it took two mental breakdowns to get me immediately flown away from sight. Now, I don't wish that upon anybody. I don't wish what I went through, the pain that I went through, the frustration that I went through, the way it manifested into an incredible level of suicide idealization, the medication I had to be on, the relationships that broke down, everything that I lost, financially, security, everything, no family, no immediate family here to support me, just a couple of people that I've become friends with over the years who kindly stepped up and gave me a roof over my head prior to going into the mental institute. An acquaintance who I'd met whilst out partying gave me a room to stay in his house. My best mate, Dave Codden, an actual earth angel who just said, come and stay with us. I'm here for you. Just do what you've got to do to get better. But the only way things were going to change was when I chose to accept. And I can remember after doing part of the, the, the program in, in one of, on one of the mornings, being alone in one of the rooms where there was a whiteboard. And I remember taking time to reflect. Now, bearing in mind, this, this mind here, this, this brain, this information is being created based on what I'm allowing to go in. This wasn't the way I was thinking when I was admitted into the Marion Center. This was me choosing to take action. Excuse me. This was me choosing to look at the situation and figure out there must be a better way. So the messages that were going in through my headphones off my iPod, remember I chose to download these audios. I chose to press, press play. I chose to put this information into my head. Even when I was feeling super low, even when I didn't want to be here anymore. And that gave me the ability to step up to a whiteboard and start mapping out why was this happening? Not why was it happening to me? Why was this happening right now? Why had I experienced that? Why had these people come into my life? Why was I listening to personal development? Why in particular was it these people who were talking to me? You know, two of them, Jim Rowan and, and Wayne Dyer, aren't even with us anymore. They weren't even with us at the time of me listening to that stuff. Why are they here now giving me the messages that I need to hear? And I'm asking myself these questions. And when I started to answer them, because the answers are within, when we take the time to slow down, when we take the time to maybe even stop, but the problem is for most of us, and I'm guilty of it, and this is what I was doing. I was keeping myself busy to avoid listening to the answers because I didn't want to face the pain. I wanted to suppress the pain, as many of us do, and just keep going on the hamster wheel of life until eventually the bearings of that wheel fall off. They crack and the whole wheel falls off. And all of a sudden we're stopped and we don't know where we are and we're lost and we're confused and we have to think. And because we don't have the tools, we break down. And I'm extremely grateful 
for my doctor, for the psychiatrist, the psychologist, the nurses, the people who helped me within the Marion Centre. I am extremely grateful for the experience. I wasn't at the time. I didn't want to be there. I couldn't wait to get out of there. But in reflection, and during my time within there where I started connecting the dots, it was clear that the things that were happening were happening for me because I am here to create an incredible impact in the world. And I don't say that egotistically. I say that from a place of I became clear that I am here to live my life, not to exist. Now, this isn't coming from a place of putting anybody down and mocking anybody because we all live by the power of choice. And if anyone turns around and says, no, we don't because there's rules and there's laws, every single person has the ability to live by the power of choice. The choices we make every single day, as I mentioned earlier, have consequences. Those consequences, then we make a judgment whether they're good or bad. But every single consequence, every single result is good when we choose to look at it based on growth, based on acceptance, based on understanding that we can't experience what the, sky, what the stars look like in the sky if night isn't there. We can't experience what's around us based on, the, based on what we can see with the light's not there. So we have to have the law of polarity. We have to have day to have night. We have to have a front to have a back. We have to have good to have bad. And most of us don't want to experience bad, but we're choosing to make these decisions and live our life in a state that's disempowering us. And this is all that we're experiencing because we're not taking the conscious action to move over here. We want to experience the good. We want to experience the growth, but we're not willing to do the work. And we'd rather stay in a place of comfort that keeps us limited for the rest of our lives. And you right now have a conscious decision to make, a choice to make as to are you going to shift? Are you going to actually move forward and make better decisions? Are you going to look at the people who are around you? Are you actually going to stand up and say, do you know what? From this point right now, I am going to serve myself, not from a point of selfish, as Jules says, from a place of selfish selflessness, to love myself enough to make a conscious decision as to those who are around me, I'm going to change who I spend the time with. I'm grateful for those people who are around me that have taught the lessons, but I know for me to become a better version of myself, for me to experience a better life, I need to be surrounded by better people. And that's not from a place of these people aren't good for you. This is from a place of where these people are right now maybe isn't serving you as to who you are, who you came here to be and what you came here to do. And I know this from a place of exactly what I experienced. And from you choosing to experience this, it's what's going to help you move in the direction that you are born here to do, to share your greatness with the world. You have a light that's shining brightly with inside of you. And the only way that we can experience is when you choose to connect within your truest self, within your heart and share from your heart. Not from here. Not from here. This will always limit you because the moment that you start thinking, you start questioning, you start disempowering yourself, you let emotion kick in, you have limited your own growth and also the experience that we're ready to experience. Now I'm saying this from a place of love. This is not me saying it from a place of picking on you and bullying you or any way, shape or form or telling you what you should or shouldn't be doing. This is from a place of igniting your burning desire within you to help you understand that every single one of us arrived here with a purpose. Every single one of us chose to come here. Now this is coming from somebody who was about to choose to move away, to take their own life, to move on to another side, to say that I'm not supposed to be here, this isn't my time. To turn that all around, to accept that the pain that I was going through back then and the pain that I still go through today, I'm not immune to it. I've just learned to use the energy of it to propel me to greater experiences, to greater good in the world. The pain that you're experiencing or have experienced is happening to you because you are strong enough to accept it. You are strong enough to learn from it. You are strong enough to grow from it and you are strong enough to share it with the rest of the world because people need to see you in your truest self within your, within your spirit, which then becomes inspiration to them to help them see the value that they truly are. And I'm sharing this with you right now from an authentic place, from a place of love, because 
you right now are the best version of yourself. Irrelevant as to whether you're going to make a judgment to your current situation. Some of you may feel that you've lost your job or you have lost your job. You may feel that you're not, how are you going to earn income? How are you going to survive? It's a decision for you to survive. The decision for me to not take my life was the hardest decision I have ever had to make. And I truly hope that I don't have to make it again. But the thing is, is I've had that experience. I've learned from that lesson. I've learned from that experience. I've learned from that part of my adventure. And the fact that I've learned from it, I'm not going to go there again. The thought of the way that I was going to take my life, to, to even the, the instrument that was going to be used, to see that instrument every day. I chose to accept that what was happening was going to make me the best version of myself. And sharing this message right with you right now, I am growing immensely. I am growing and growing because the more that we share with other people, the more we help other people. But we can't just keep going around and sharing without doing the inner work on ourselves. You think of Robin Williams, someone who brought incredible joy to millions of people around the world, potentially billions of people around the world, and yet was still lost inside. And I'm not saying Robin didn't do the work on himself because I don't know. But what I am saying is, is that when we take ownership of filling our own cup, we get value from other people. We get value from helping other people. Once again, the law of giving and receiving. But what are we giving to ourselves? How are we filling our own cup? And it's often said flippantly. It's often said flippantly. And we all know that we should be filling our own cup. But the reality of it is, how are we filling our own cup? And the problem for a lot of us is that our cup is already full and we are not prepared to empty it. The same as the mind. I often speak to people whenever I'm doing any coaching and saying, you need to empty this right now before we start. Because if this is already full, how are you going to learn anything? There's no room for anything else to go in. Yes, you've got your past experiences. Yes, you've got everything that's got you here right today. But for you to become more, we need better information going in. Therefore, we need to create room. What are you prepared to let go of? What is not serving you right now in this moment? What is limiting your growth? What are you not accepting? You know, Beth did an incredible live with sharing into the community around forgiveness. It's one of my biggest topics that I love to talk about. Because when I was going through all that bullying and I was saying to these people in my mind, I'm going to kill these people. I actually was using those wor that word. If I was to see them on the street, I would kill them. That's how much hatred and anger I had boiling inside of me. Do you think it was serving me? Absolutely not. It was creating a fire within me that was actually burning me. It wasn't a burning desire. It wasn't a, burning, a burn that was actually going to encourage me to move forward. It was a fire that was the devil. And this isn't religious context in any way, shape or form. It was this hatred and this anger. And as Wayne Dyer said, having hatred and anger for other people and wishing ill on other people is just like the snake biting you and expecting somebody else to die from it by putting poison in somebody's cup of coffee and expecting them to then die from that when they're not even drinking it. It's all these different things that come up with this hatred, this, this anger, this frustration. And what's so important to understand is that when we choose to forgive others and accept that they in, the, in that moment were an incredible teacher to us. They were teaching us how not to be. They were teaching us how to be, how to become. But many of us focus on, oh, that person's this kind of person because of X, Y, and Z. No, that person was teaching you. They, they chose to Pre, like it's the greatest form of love they chose to show up in your life to teach you the lesson 
on how you can become better. And only in reflection on their own life are they going to be able to see and go, wow, that wasn't the best decision I ever made. But I now realize that it wasn't and therefore I can act upon it and make sure I don't do it again. Because none of us are perfect in regards to the actions that we take. We're all perfect in regards to creation. But the behaviors that we choose to, to um, show each day, the actions we choose to show, we all, we all are learning this way. I've done things in my life that are from a judgment point I'm not proud of. But if I'm actually to learn from them and accept them, I won't do them again. And I know that when I think back to them, how I feel about what I chose to do, I feel disempowered from a place of it wasn't the right thing to do as in showing love to somebody else. But at the same time, I'm empowered because I know it's not the thing to do again. So therefore, I won't do it. And this comes from a place of us actually slowing down. This comes from a place of us taking the time to reflect, but reflect consciously, not reflect from a place of I'm going to go take myself back there to disempower myself, to sit there and to start, start willowing in my pain and nobody loves me and nothing's ever going to change for me. No, that's a victim mindset. That's, a, that's being a victim. How is anything ever going to change when we choose to be a victim? Nothing's ever going to change. And I learned this the hard way because that's the way that I was living. And the amount of people that have said to me, well, it's all right for you because you got out of it. The only reason I got out of it was because I made a decision that I was going to get out of it. That was the only difference. I made a decision. I chose to accept that what was happening was happening for me and not to me. And whatever's going on in your life right now, whether it be a relationship breakdown with an intimate partner or a family member or a friend, whether it be a sickness, everything is happening for a reason. And the moment that you accept it, you don't need to know why. You don't need to know why it's happening. But I'd encourage you to choose to accept it. Because the moment that acceptance starts, this is happening right now. I don't know why it's happening, but it's happening. And there is a solution to this. Most people going through sickness do you know what that's a sign of? What health feels like. So if anyone's going through sickness, what choices can you make to help you become healthy? But also, sickness is a state of dis-ease. The body being in a state of dis-ease, which is disease. Therefore, it's come from the actions that we've taken previously. Whether that be not eating correctly or not drinking the right water or not, or putting ourselves in a stressful relationship or putting ourselves under too much pressure in a, in a work situation, whatever it may be. And it's created a level of dis-ease within the body which has manifested into an illness, sickness, disease. That's what it is. So for things to get better, we have to create a shift. We have to go the opposite way. And therefore, we need to make better decisions. But we can only understand how to make better decisions when we accept the decisions that we made didn't give us the best results. Therefore, what's taken place in that moment? Growth. Growth has taken place. And the problem with society in general is that success is only measured based on financial. In society, it's based on what you have, how much money you have in the bank, the materialistic things, the way you dress, how good your hair looks, which I obviously have no attachment to. But these are the things that society chooses to make their judgment from in regards to the growth aspect. But one of the things that a lot of people don't see is the person that we become in regards to during that process, until they have a conversation with us, until they are open to ask for our opinion and we choose to come from an open, non-judgmental angle. You see this in business all the time. 
One of the biggest things in businesses, especially if somebody started their own business and they're trying to maybe enroll or recruit somebody, let's look at direct sales and network marketing, for example, most people turn around and go, well, how much have you earned? As if that's the only thing that matters about the whole thing. And the moment somebody asks that, it's a clear indication that success is only measured to them based on how much money they earn, not on the person that they become. Because people don't put a value on the person that we become. Because for most people in society, they would rather speak and think negatively. They won't admit it and they'll say, no, no, that isn't me. I'm a positive person. But they'll put more emphasis. They go and have an, a, a negative experience at a restaurant. What are they? Straight on to Google giving a negative review or on Facebook or whatever it is. They don't give the feedback to the owners and say, hey, look. The food we felt wasn't cooked right. It, it hasn't been an enjoyable experience here today. And I'm sharing it with you to help you make sure that you provide a better experience for your other guests. And should we ever come back, I do hope that you would actually, I do hope that the experience then is a better experience. I had a printing company do a load of work for me and they made a mess of the work three times. Three times. Most people would have left after the first go. And I just said to them, we all make mistakes. All that I expect you to do as a paying customer is get it right. I'm going to give you the opportunity to get it right. I'm not going to go and slate you. And they got it right. And I've still given them work. Now, this isn't to say that I'm some angel and I'm all great and I'm better than everybody else because this is the way I think. But I would like to think that if I make a mistake, somebody else would give me Give me the time, give me the respect to correct it, to learn from my mistakes, to make sure that I'm able then to not make those mistakes again. Because how do I know if it's a mistake if somebody doesn't highlight it to me, if I'm, not, if I'm unaware of it? This is the power of us being able to learn from our experiences, especially when we take the time to reflect. When you, when you actually go back to what I said earlier around, you are the greatest version of yourself right now. You have never been better than you are right now in this given moment. This is the best you have ever been, but it's not the best you ever will be. Because every second, every second that ticks by, you are growing, you are becoming more, you are learning. And it could be, you know, so for some of us, we might sit there and go, well, you know, well, my sister, all she does all day long is sit on the couch and she doesn't eat well and she doesn't look after herself and the kid's there, she just leaves them and, and they just, you know, they just, they're, they're not loved by the mother uh, who's my sister and so on. It's like, well, that person is growing because at some point in her life, in this example, something may happen and she reflects back on being there and she's able to see that that's not the way I want to live anymore. That's not the way I want to treat my children anymore. That's not the relationship I want to have with my sibling. But it's also a lesson for you in that moment to go, I don't want to be like that. I've, I've had, and it was highlighted and it hit me like a train hit me. And I hope I never experienced that, by the way. But I've had this thing towards my dad for years and years and years in regards to my dad used to get up at 4, 4.30 in the morning, go to work, finish his job, be back at half 12, eat a packet of biscuits pretty much, then go off to his next job, probably get back in around about half six. My dad had three to four jobs to do each week just to keep a roof over our heads, just to put food on the table, to put clothes on our back. And, and I used to get really upset with him because for me, Health was a massive value for me. It was one of my highest, if not my highest value back then. And to see my dad come home and have lunch, which was a packet of chocolate digestive biscuits, really used to annoy me. For me to see him come in and just sit on the couch and fall asleep on the couch, and for him to not look after himself and see him gaining weight, see him having to go on medication, that used to really frustrate me. And I had a big problem about this. But one of the things that I ended up realizing was 
My dad was actually happy with the way that he was doing things. He was happy eating his chocolate digestives. Yes, he wouldn't have like he would have preferred to not have to go and work four jobs, but at the same time, it's what he had to do, and he did what he had to do. But in that moment, when I realised and I accepted that he was happy doing what he wanted to do, I was then able to see the lesson that he was teaching me was just be happy. It doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. It doesn't matter if I'm like you know, I, for me, I'm eating a, a raw vegan salad, and my dad, my dad has an opinion of, what the hell's he eating that rabbit food for? Get some bloody chocolate digestives into you. It doesn't matter what the opinion is. It's what matters to us, as in how we feel. And I realized when I was going through this process that my dad was teaching me not only to be happy, but also to accept others for the way that they want to live and understand that they are teaching me and they are teaching you how to live the life that you want to live, that resonates with you, to live without judgment, which is one of the hardest things to ever do. But the key is to be aware of judgment because we can only correct things, we can only change things based on our awareness. And this is why it's so important to understand the value of this. This is why it's so important to understand the value of acceptance. Because once we learn to accept, we are then ready to move forward. We are then ready to grow. When I chose to accept that I now had the opportunity to change the course of my life, my burning desire to impact lives all over the world in a positive way, I now had the choice to make. Was I going to do that or was I continue to do the things that I already knew that had got me to the point of depression and suicide idealization? Was I going to continue on that path or was I going to make a conscious decision to make a different cha- to make a different um, approach, take a different road, to make different decisions, to make decisions that were more aligned with where I wanted to go, to experience the life that I came here to experience, to impact the lives that I'm here to impact. Was I willing to do that? And when I stepped into that vision of what it felt like and the people around me, the people who were smiling because their lives had been impacted, the people I was shaking hands with and hugging, the calls that I had, the plane trips that I had to actually go and speak around the world, to give my time, my energy, my knowledge, my experiences with other people to help them move forward. To step into that vision empowered me and I wanted to experience it. And through understanding the power of visualization, through understanding the power of connection, then I was able to start creating, manifesting, creating the life that I wanted to live. Now, Almost, in fact, over five years ago, it'll be six years, it'll be, actually, it's six years on April the 6th that I was flown off the, the, the site that I was on in the mines. I can't believe it's been six, six years. But over that six years, I have impacted positively thousands of lives around the world. And I'm not saying this once again to impress you at all. I have no attachment to the number, but to bring it into perspective for you to understand this. It was a decision that I made that I was not going to live a life of mediocrity. I was not going to live a life of pain. I was going to learn from my experiences. I was going to learn from where I was right then. And I was going to impact my own life through making better decisions. And therefore, once my cup was filling, I knew excuse me, that if I did exactly what I needed to do, then the overflow effect was just organically going to touch people. The ripple effect was going to get out there and it was going to impact more people around the world. And all that I'm choosing to do is be the best version of myself every single day. And that's all that you have. Every single moment of every single day allows you to become the best version of yourself and share yourself in the best possible way. And whether that be something that upsets somebody else, you are giving them the message that they need to hear, that they need to see. Whether it be a family member, a friend, somebody you work with, or somebody you've never met before and you're just in a queue and all of a sudden you do something or whatever it is. 
You are being the best version of yourself in that moment. And you may reflect on, on the day and go, well, that wasn't the best decision I made. That wasn't the best action that I actually took. But it was the best action because you've now learned from it and you now know what the consequence is and you also know, was it the best place to do it? There is so much that you can choose to take, but it only comes down to a decision to accept that everything that you are choosing to do has a consequence and a consequence that you must accept and I'm using must accept if you want to experience growth, which is a result or the result of growth is a better life for you, for your family members, for the people around you, your friends, your work colleagues, everyone. It will impact your attitude. It will impact every single part of your life. The question really is, is are you willing to make that choice? Are you willing to make the choice to change your life based on making better decisions, accepting every single thing that has ever happened, irrelevant of if it was what you're doing or somebody else is doing, choosing to forgive as Beth talked about. And those of us who are saying, I can't forgive somebody, that is what will hold you back. That is what will hold you back. And straight away, the, 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 the voice is going to come up well, it's easy for you to say, Martin, you're not, you, 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 it's, you haven't gone through this or you don't know this person. You don't know what she or he did to me. There's, there's, a, there's many, many stories around the world of people who have gone through what we would in society make a judgment as being absolutely horrific and they have chosen to forgive. And the questions asked is, how could anybody forgive another person for doing that? But the, the shift that takes place is the, it, it's pure love. It's pure love and that's all that we all have within us. Many of us have got lost. Many of us have got disconnected from it. And not from just a place of love to others. The most important love we can actually give is give to self. To look ourselves in the mirror, look directly into our eyes and connect with our soul and speak to the child within us and give forgiveness and share acceptance for every experience and every experience that will come in the future because every single part of this ad adventure and it truly is I used to say journey but it's truly an adventure it's truly an adventure and if you want to understand the power of this acceptance stroke forgiveness Watch the movie The Shack with Sam Worthington. Watch the movie The Shack and watch it several times because each time you watch it, you'll learn more and you'll start to see the value of enjoying the journey stroke adventure. You'll start to understand around why everything that's happening, every single person that's been in our life, that is in our life, that will be in our life are playing an important role of helping us become the person that we are, that we will become. Every single person. And the more that I invest in myself, the time, the audios, the books that I read, the conversations I have, the, the, the YouTube videos, the Facebook lives I listen to, the other mentors I listen to, Every time that I do that, there's a level of growth, there's an impact that, that happens within me, which takes me to the next level. And this is exactly the same for you right now. Your vibration is shifting continuously. But it only continues based on your willingness to continue to do the work, to unpeel back those layers, to work through the things that come up, to take the time to invest in yourself, Warren Buffett, known for being one of the most wealthiest men in the world. Most people focus on his money. But he'll t he says, and it's a bold, bold quote that's actually been shared many, many times. The best investment you can make is in yourself. Imagine being a better father, a better mother, a better son, a better daughter, a better auntie, a better uncle. 
Imagine being a better version of yourself. That when the time comes for you to pass, people are continuously talking about you. It's not about your money. People don't remember all, all around the money that you had. They remember the impact, what the, the, the print you left on them. What is that message going to be? What is that imprint going to be? Do you want to have the generations afterwards talking about you? Wow, Auntie Mary, she, you know, she was just so quirky. She was so funny. She was always positive. She always had an answer and a solution mindset. She never seemed to be down. And if she did have something happen, it was amazing to understand how she just shifted it and she took it as a way to drive her further forward. How Uncle Tommy would always see the, the glass half full, even though, yes, it's still half empty, he would always say, no, no, come on. The glass still is half full. I've still got water to drink. This is happy days. Imagine leaving that kind of print on somebody else's life where they then start to implement that. That's a gift, but that only happens when we choose to accept. So as I wrap this up right now, and, and I truly do from the bottom of my heart, immense gratitude for your time, your love, your energy, your support. The question right now is, are you willing to accept every single thing that has ever happened for you, capital letters, F-O-R, for you, to help you grow? Irrelevant of how you feel about it right now. Irrelevant of the, the judgment, the attachment, what your mother or your best friend says. Irrelevant of the opinions of others. Because one of the things that Les Brown said, the opinions of other people do not have to become your own reality. The negative opinions of yourself don't have to become your own reality. You have the choice. And if I can do it, this isn't a cliche, this is me being 100% from a place of being humble. If I can do it, you can do it. You are one decision away. You are one decision away from changing the course of your life. The wind blows on every one of us. It's just a case of the set of the sail. Are you going to adjust your sail to help you move in the direction that you wish to go? Or are you going to keep it in the same place and go around in circles? This is your choice. And I send you incredible, immense love, gratitude, and a knowing that if you're ready to and you're willing to, you can experience the best life that you, you have ever imagined and ever, and ever had done up to this moment. Bless you for your time, your energy, your love, your support, and I look forward to connecting with you again soon. Peace, love, and happiness. Bye for now.